what's up guys it is dan from fight wave and today i'm privileged to be joined by somebody i'm incredibly excited to speak with and if you're a fan of australian mma you'll know today's guest made a massive announcement a few days ago when he was announced that he would be facing former eternal featherweight champion justin van heerden in a high stakes bout for the ages that could decide the potential next featherweight from Australia to head over to a major promotion, most notably the UFC. And I'm privileged to be joined by the gentleman that will be standing across from Justin Van Heerden today, one of the most exciting fighters out of Australia. He represents Sudan and Australia with absolute grace and pride. I am privileged to be joined by the pride of Sudan and the pride of Western Australia and the pride of kick-ass MMA, Abdullah Biata. Abdullah, thank you so much for your time, brother. It's an absolute privilege to speak with you. Abdullah, you know how to make a statement, by the way. You know, this fight with Justin absolutely threw everyone off their feet, swept everyone off their feet. Talk to me about how you're feeling now that the news is finally out and you get to settle the score with Justin. Man, um, it's a long time coming with this fight. And um, I was I was not going to, like, rest until this fight has been announced and has been, like, the contract has been signed because he's been yapping around. For years, he's been telling me, he's been telling everyone I'm irre- irrelevant. I'm not the real champ. I'm not the featherweight champ. But the the only thing that I've been waiting for is just a contract to be sent to me, and it's finally sent to me. And um, we're finally gonna meet in the what's called in the cage. And I can't wait to like show show the world and show him who is irrelevant and who is like you know the featherweight champion because I truly believe. I am the, what's called like the best featherweight in the country, um, hands down. I don't, I don't see anybody like being better than me. I just believe that I'm the best, and Van Heerden is just another opponent. Um, I'm not overlooking him. He's very experienced. He's very dangerous. Um, I'm taking him very serious. But this is the first ever fight that has a lot of animosity behind it. Um, a lot of beef going around it. But um. I've never, I've never had like any of my other opponents just trash talk me like this, but this one is definitely personal, and um, I can't wait to do a little, like very, like very much, like enjoy hurting. I can't wait. No, yeah, definitely a lot of bad blood going into this fight, and just so many obstacles that had to be overcome to get this fight finally on paper. Talk to me just about, you know, the, there has been at least a year and a half of back and forth between you two. I know there was a lot of frustration on both ends, just about wanting to fight each other, but exclusivity from Justin's end with Eternal, and then a lot of other stuff happening uh, that just didn't let this fight happen. What's been the back and forth like with Hex to finally get this one done, and what does it mean for you to, after a year and a half, get this fight just finally in front of you? You know there's no, you know, exclusivity nonsense. You have the opponent in front of you, and you don't have to think about anything else. Um, the difference between like Eternal and Hex, like Hex always want to put on the best fights, the best fighting, the best. Um, Eternal does the same thing, but I just couldn't, couldn't get my hands on it. Um, locked jaw. I couldn't, I couldn't get a fight with him when I was like on a seven Usko fight win streak, and I was asking for him to like fight me for the eternal belt and I don't know what's going on there the you know paperwork is happening or whatever then I was like I am not, I'm gonna stop chasing you you can keep talking you can you can be an eternal champ and um if you want to fight me I personally inboxed him I was like if you really want to fight me come come to hex let's let's get it let us get it going and um Jacob Jacob the promoter of like hex he knows me and Van Heden will be a big 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 fight when the Hex was for promotion. And I told him, all I want is Justin Van Heden. Um, please try to make it happen. And I don't know what Van Heden did, but he vacated the the eternal belt. I don't know what's going on there. I don't really care. Um, I'm glad we're just here. And it means a lot to me because beating him is just going to just gonna show that like I'm levels above every featherweight in the country. I'm levels above like a lot of people and I'm not just like a guy who's just coming in and who's just good at like certain points. I'm a mixed martial artist and this fight is going to show that like I am a mixed martial artist. Um, he's a grappler. I'm a striker as everybody knows, but 
No one knows how good my grappling is. No one has no clue. Because I don't I choose not to grapple. Um um I think it's just kind of exhausting and um kind of boring. Um people want to come see me like break someone's face with my foot or something. They don't want to see me like just be on the top of a guy, no diddy. Um just like cuddling cuddling him and shit. Like who wants to see that? They want to see me just throw anything, all the striking that all the striking tools that I have and put them on the show. That's what they come to see. And and stoppage stoppage will be great, but I really just want to have a five round war with this guy, like five round war and let's see who's the best. So it can be like, you know, put to the side in the end of the fight and everybody would know who's the best who's called featherweight. And yeah, it's been a long time and I just, I've never been so excited. I, I truly thought he was never going to like, you know, fight me after he beat Michael Barber for the second time. Um, his performance was, was average, even though he keeps tell- telling everyone, oh, he took a year off, um, he hasn't competed in, like in a while. I'm like, bro, like you fight exactly the same. No matter, even if you take three, five years off, man, you still fight the same. You fight so safe. But me, I don't like fighting safe. Like in this one, there's no fighting safe or nothing. If I get injured, I get injured. You know, if I lose, I lose. It's not about the belt. It's about this guy talking shit and me just damaging him. And he was called putting my name um, in the featherweight with called books that I am the best. Like, he he doesn't know, like, he doesn't know what's coming. And he thinks he got in my head. It takes a lot for someone to get in my head. My my, my mind is what's called, like, bulletproof, man. I'm, he, he can talk all the smack he wants, but in the end, we're going to be locked in that cage. And there's no way he's going to be running. There's no way. No, yeah, definitely. And you answered my next question. Actually, I was going to ask you about your thoughts on the performance against Michael Barber, but you've answered that already. So I want to ask you just on another note, because you mentioned the layoff for Justin, but I feel like it would be unfair to not mention the layoff that you had. I know for you, it was a little frustrating, uh, you know, fighting for, you know, originally slated, I think it was Hex 28. You were going to fight Khan Offley. That didn't pan out. And then you had to fight Semikata Kakembo. And then, you yeah. know, just the frustration, not being able to get a fight at 145, you had, to, you mm-hmm. took the risk. And honestly, I don't think you're getting enough credit for taking the risk that you took and going up to 55 for champ champ status against Harry Webb. I know for you, obviously not the result you wanted, but a lot of lessons learned in that fight and being able to just navigate the more business side of the fight game. What was your kind of takeaways going into the fight with Harry? And what did you learn about just being able to navigate the MMA landscape on your own? Man, the the fight with Harry, um, it was a weird one because I was trying to like fight for the the vacant featherweight belt, and no one in the featherweight division was available. And I was um, I already beat Sam Kikimbo, so I'm like, okay, who else is there? Um, we've been asking a lot of people, but some other other featherweight fighters they're over in Eternal. We can't get them to Hex because of some contract or whatever. They can't. They can't leave or whatever. So, and Harry, and then we we got offered Harry for the vacant lightweight belt because Harry was struggling to look for an opponent. And I was looking, it was like, I was struggling to look for an opponent in the featherweight division. I'm like, hell yeah. I didn't hesitate one bit about fighting Harry Webb. I'm like, yo, I, I don't mind what's going being a double champ. I took it. I jumped on that, what's going like, that offer straight away. And obviously it didn't go my way, but, Leading up to the fight, man, the camp was great. The the weight cut was awesome. I did what I what's go like what I wanted to do in the fight, but at the end, that that ten seconds of like you know I call it like um the lucky ticket, the lucky ticket to like you know to like you know superstardom. I was like damn. That, when I look back at the fight, I'm like damn. I I didn't I didn't break down. Of course I was I was very sad. Of course because like I wanted to win. But I was like, man, really, like, you know, that really happened. And then it it also taught me, like, anything can happen in a fight. Anything can happen. You can't, you know, like, anything can happen no matter what. You can't, you can't just, like, think that you can see the future or whatever. But the better man beat me that night. I didn't have, I have zero excuses. I was like, I told Webb, I'm like, you are the better man tonight. And now you got the target on your back. Um. Hopefully you you get to beat them all. 
And um, I told him, eventually in the future, we got to run this shit back because I don't think I'm going to sleep right until I get mine back, like until I fight you again, until I see you again in the cage. But um, the way things are going, um, I don't think it's, it's never going to happen. And um, they're kind of just ignoring me no matter what and ignoring my team for the rematch. But I'm not at the stage to ask for a rematch anyways. The guy put me out cold. You saw the fight, man. Now I'm like, whoa. When I saw the fight, I'm like, damn, this boy put me out cold. So I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't have the right at the moment to like be calling out for a rematch because in um he him and his team they have the right to say yes or no, right? He put me out cold, so he won like fair and square, like the best man won that night. But man, I told myself, um. Just don't dwell on that, you know. It didn't go your way. That's okay. That's the fight game. That's the game we play. It's unpredictable. So I told myself, just get back on the horse, keep doing you, and just improve. Pick up from this loss and just keep moving forward. Jump back on what's going on the horse. So um, eventually, we will meet again, me and Harry Webb. But I don't know when. I, I can't predict the future. I don't know what's going to happen. Um, hopefully, he's still undefeated when he sees me again. Because I want to be the first one to actually take his oath, and it's gonna be it's gonna feel so fucking good when I do, and it's gonna be I'm gonna feel I'm gonna have like nice dreams after that, you know. I'm gonna feel sleep well, like you know he he made my fans cry after putting me out. It's time to for me to return the favor and make his fans also like cry when we rematch, because it's not gonna be the same fight as the first one, and I can't wait like. I, I took a lot from that fight. I took a lot. But, um, yeah, uh, like I said, uh, the better man won that night. I'm moving on. Um, I wasn't too stressed about it, but I was sad, of course, because it meant a lot to me. But we move forward, man. Things happen like this, you know. Um, uh, it is what it is, and I'm just moving forward. Right now, it's just going down to, like, my natural weight and get rid of the only boogeyman, apparently that is there because I don't think anybody else will, uh, in the featherweight division is like around. So get rid of him and cer um, certify my name in the featherweight, what's called like, you know, books as like the best featherweight out there. And then thinking of just going back again and just, you know, trying to make an, another run for the lightweight belt. But hopefully everything goes well. Hopefully everything goes well. No, yeah, absolutely. And, you know, just the class that you exhume, Abdella, and even handling a loss with such grace, it speaks volumes to the character of that you have. And I wanted to touch on something because, of course, for you, defeat, this isn't the first time you've lost. But the last time you lost, we saw the evolution of Abdella Biata. Still very, you know, we spoke last time a lot about mindset and getting in the killer's mindset. The art, your canvas is your art, you know, the canvas is your artwork. And the way you paint a painting in the, in the octagon itself is a big part of what constitutes a fighter's kind of legacy. And I know for you, you know, we've seen the evolution across your young career thus far. The last time you lost prior to Harry Webb, we saw you go on a remarkable seven fight win streak. And we saw your mindset and kind of overall appreciation for the game flourish with every fight that you had. What's it been like for you to kind of navigate the mindset through the losses and be able to still come out and almost feel like you've leveled up despite the result? You know, put the result to the side. You come out even sharper in mindset almost after a loss. What's it been like for you to be able to navigate and learn through these experiences? I truly, I truly know what I can do, what, what I'm very capable of. So I don't really dwell on like, you know, the, um, the result, the wins and all that and the losses. As long as my mind is uh, like very strong and bulletproof, I will still bounce back and stronger than ever. That's one thing that like I always know deeply within within myself. I'm a hard worker, man. Like I, I'm always in the gym. I'm always like trying to evolve. I'm always taking advice. I'm always trying new things because I want to better myself because one day there's going to be a day, there's going to be a day that like I will be unstoppable and no one is going to figure me out. And I know that. So for me to like think about giving up, what the fuck is giving up? Because if you give up, you're basically telling you the world and telling yourself you're a loser. And that's not what I am. I am not a loser. I know I'm not a loser. I'm a winner. And I win in every aspect of like anything. Life, you know, the game that I play, I win everywhere. 
So I always have to keep my mind bulletproof and just keep going no matter what. Like the two losses that I have in my professional careers, everything went well. Like the camp leading up to the fights and then I just come short. It doesn't make sense to me. But like, it doesn't like, it doesn't, you know, tell myself to like, you know, reduce the work rate. Nah, the work rate is still high. I'm still like, you know, working and evolving and taking a lot of knowledge and experience because because that's how that's what part of the game is sometimes you're the nail sometimes you're like you know the hammer and you know you got to take it how it comes but you know you can't predict the future but those two like these two losses especially this recent one the Harry Webb one it woke in something inside me I don't know what it is but it woke in like probably a demon now I'm just like yo I'm, I'm, I'm Oh yeah, I'm just like a hundred times. It's a new been world right now, and I think everybody's gonna be hurt whenever I just see anybody across from me. Everybody's gonna be hurt because I think I was just like chilling out a little bit leading up to the um because I was on a like seven fight win streak, and it's kind of my fault. I was in um I got too comfortable. I got too comfortable. I'm like ah, I'm gonna win another. You know, I got too comfortable, but my work. My work rate was still high, but my mindset of like, you know, staying true to to myself and being strong, strong minded kind of like fell down a little bit because I was like, nah, I'm gonna run through them like I do with everyone. And that was my kind of fault. And um it was a learning curve and um I'm probably not gonna do that ever again. And that's probably what cost me the fight a little bit. But even though I I did what I wanted to do, but I think it cost me the fight a little bit because I was like, oh, just another fight kind of thing. And it's a big life lesson. And I I, can't, I just can't wait to get back in the cage, to be honest. Absolutely. And, you know, one thing that I said off camera, I, didn't, I know the, I didn't turn on the camera for that or the microphone for that, but the Nubian warrior almost being reawakened in that sense. And, you know, I think sometimes all it requires for a fighter is for a fire to kind of be relit under them again because... Like you said, there's a lot of complacency sometimes in the fight game. But I know for you, when you're not even, you know, fighting, you know, you're really just a great resource for the people around you. You've been a leader in, in the WA fighting scene for quite a while, ever since you started. You know, just the way you've been able to carry yourself both through amateur and professional, you've done great things. And there's an infamous text uh, that I think Moses Dang shared on his story. You texted him 6 a.m., I think, work, workout 6 a.m., and it speaks to the quality of leadership that you possess. I want to ask you, just in the time away from, from the fighting, what's it been like for you to encompass this leadership role for the fighting community in WA? And what does it mean for you to kind of see the people showing up, you know, when you say something, your word holds weight. What does that mean for you? And how does that motivate you to continue to go on for bigger and better things? Um, ever since, like, I've been a young, young teenager, man, um, I knew I was a leader. You know, I knew I was a leader. So I'm very careful with what I say. I'm very careful in wh when I use my emotions. I'm very careful in, like, what I do in front of, like, the people who look up to me. And, um... I don't want them to like think this type of way. I'm always gonna be myself, no matter what, and that's that's the true um character of myself. And me just to, like doing me and just like watching them observe, that's that's good enough for me. And to see that like I just always work and always try to push forward, no matter what happens, no matter what life throws at me, I'm still gonna try to find ways to like you know work either work around it. Or just like I was gonna use it as fuel, and people see that, and the people around me always see that, and um, and I really just like it. Kind of like they, I never tell anybody, but it kind of like just drives me more to to keep going and just to keep being me and keep to keep driving. And it's fucking amazing, like how like whatever I say, like people take it. It kind of shocks me sometimes. I'm like, oh, oh, they listen, oh, someone, oh, they're listening. I was like, okay. And then I kind of reflect back to myself. I'm like, um, yeah, um, it's understandable and it's expected because what I do, like without anybody watching or without even like caring, caring about anybody who's like seeing what I'm doing, it's what what people look for in anybody. Like they look for someone who's just always driven and passionate about us, about something and also like staying true to themselves. And that's what they, they see in me. And um, I see that in, within myself as well. And um, I just want to continue just being a, 
a great role model, like not just for like friends, family, just for everyone, whoever, whoever, whoever is going through it, like, you know, just know, like I'm human too. I went through the same shit. Um, but I just try to like either go around it or go straight towards it or find ways to like fuel it and like to fuel inside me and then make it work for me. That's, it kind of like just drives me all the time to just keep doing what I'm, yeah, doing. Like that quote from Moses, man, I didn't know you, <laughs> I didn't know he told you that. But like, yeah, we do, um, we do sprints like early in the morning, man, like, and we just have like nice chats whenever like we're driving down to the, um, to the to the to the beach for the sprints yeah um and it's fucking it's it's just like amazing like how we like both of us just click and how we we're trying to get to to the top and what it takes to get to the top and it's great to have those kind of characters around me and um it kind of fuels you up no matter what um just uh yeah like that's that's the goal just to say Stay doing me and just keep being me and no one is going to tell me otherwise. That's basically it. Absolutely. And, you know, I said at the beginning of 2024, it's going to be a pseudo takeover in 2024, to say the least. And, you know, like you said, you know, just doing you and others eventually following people recognize hard workers. And Abdullah, I want to thank you so much for your time and, you know, just for the privilege to have this quick chat with you ahead of what's going to be the biggest fight in your career. I have no doubt about it. An exciting fight for the fans. And I want to ask you just on one final note, of course, this fight with Justin is as big of a fight as you can get in the Australian regional circuit. It's a fight with potential UFC implications on top of it. A win over him that puts you in a very solid position to potentially make your debut at UFC 305 in Perth, surrounded by friends and family. Talk to me about your goals for 2024 and what a win over Justin Van Heerden would mean for you in terms of your pursuit towards MMA greatness. Like for me, I don't, I don't, I don't have a notepad that says I'm going to write things down and like tell myself, oh, I'm going to do this. Nah, like I just navigate through life, man, you know. Because life is so unpredictable. You can set goals for yourself here and there and there, and things will come between it. And, like, they will shut the whole thing that you wrote down or had in your mind. But for me, I'm just flowing through life. I'm enjoying life. And no ma- whatever happens, man, like, that's the goal. Like, to, to make my debut in the UFC, um, UFC in Perth, it would be great to see my friends and family just, like, there watching watching what I've been doing for the, for the last five years and the hard work that I put in and the sacrifices that, I, that I've made just to, like, get to this stage. It would mean a lot to me. And for me, I'm just, like, not trying to, like, look into the future. I'm mindfulness. I'm just, like, trying to stay present as much as possible. And whatever happens, happens. And if it does, like, win or lose. Uh, win or lose. If I win, I'm always calm. If I, if I, if I lose, I'm still calm. So no matter what happens to me, I'm still calm. So I'm just always trying to like just be grateful and graceful every single time, no matter what I like, just take things with going one at a time. Absolutely. And you know, what a better way to do go about it than in the biggest fight of your life, Abdullah. I want to thank you so much for your time. And to the fans at home watching, do be sure to check out Abdullah Biata versus Justin Van Heerden, the biggest fight in Australia right now. There is not a bigger fight in the entirety of Australia than this clash of featherweight titans on June 14th at Hex Fight Series 31. Do be sure to check it out. I will be linking Hex's social medias in the description down below as well as Abdella's. Check out the fight. Support your local fighter. I said at the beginning of this year, the amount of Sudanese talent that's coming out of Australia right now across several different sports is something to behold. Abdella is just a small portion of that, but a massive portion in the same sense. Do be sure to check him out on social media. It's been me, Dan, from Fight Wave. Hope you guys have enjoyed the interview. Do be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and have a great day, guys.